we've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm I'm doing pretty well. Just trying to not to look at the uh, the gifts in our uh, in our Discord chat right now, Jared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> luckily, I don't have my mouse pointer in there, so the gif isn't gifing. <laughs> uh, that would be a great time for Mrs. Kyle to walk in. Like, what kind of po- what what kind of podcast are you doing? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> it's this. All right, right, Kyle, let's get started. We have a very, very big episode today. We are previewing Arkansas State. Arkansas State. Kyle, is JSN going to play? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. Right. By the way, we're recording this a day early. So uh, if that news already came out, apologies. Um, But, uh, Ryan Day has been like, we hope to have him back. We hope to have him back. We hope to have him back. Kyle, what's rule one? The doctor always lies. The doctor lies. He doesn't always lie. It's just the doctor lies. It's not always. Because then we run into one of those situations where it's like, I always tell a lie. You know, I always say a lie. And then it feeds back on itself. We can't do that. My head would explode. All right, just move on. (laughs) (laughs) Never. (laughs) <laughs> Ryan Day won't right. say this publicly, so I'll say it publicly for him. We're going to let JSN rest this week because it's fucking Arkansas State. Hey. Ryan Day's not going to say that. Uh, he's not going to disrespect Arkansas State publicly. Good man. That's a that is the proper thing to do. And he's it also is. not going to send a message to his team that this game doesn't matter or that they can take it lightly. Um, so he's not going to send that message to the team that mm-hmm. like, oh, we're not going to waste JSN on this game. But all right, but let's, <laughs> let's yeah, but let's just jump right into it. Arkansas State Red Wolves. Now, if anybody remembers, uh, I don't know if it's last year, but I know in a previous episode we discussed about maybe it was an episode about mascots or logos I, I forget what it was but either way if you saw if you saw arkansas state's uh mascot logo are you gonna drop it in the chat kyle uh yes i i will actually let me it let is me find it. affectionately referred to as the crying wolf um it's i like it But once someone points out to you that it's a crying wolf, it's impossible to unsee it. It's like the Chicago Bulls. And if you turn the Chicago Bulls logo upside down, it's a robot reading a book. Once you (laughs) once once it's been pointed out to you, you can't unsee it. Sorry, what? (laughs) Uh, Kyle, can you can you Google uh, Bulls logo upside down for me? And drop that like in the, the chat. Second, that's like the second thing. <laughs> Look it up, Kyle. Look it up. Plastic. That's the, that's the second thing that comes up. Classic. It's a classic sloop cast. Kyle, are we taking Arkansas State lightly by um, being so shenaniganed? It's an, it's an angry robot reading. <laughs> yes, it's well, or a sad robot. Okay, we have two crying. We have two crying logos. <laughs> we have two crying logos. The Bulls we just, logo. We just made. We just made Austin's day here. <laughs> it does look like the Discord bot a bit. It's an angry Discord bot. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Kyle, we should make that the new ref bot. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we're good. Nah, I like Teddy Valentine. <laughs> All right, Arkansas State. So there's actually some things that people actually will know about Arkansas state other than the, uh, the red wolf, uh, logo here. Uh, did you know, Jared, and you still, you still called me out like, Oh, Kyle, you, you looked it up. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I, I don't believe you knew it. Not, not, not for just, today. Anyway, just so much faith, so much faith in me, Jared. It's Arkansas state. I wouldn't blame you. 
most people for listen the only reason i even know who the hell arkansas state is is because of their logo mm -hmm. it's anybody, the famous crying wolf anybody in our chat Who's the head coach of Arkansas State? You have five seconds. Otherwise, I think you looked it up. Four. Five, four, three, two, Kyle. one. Not not us. Oh, there we go. Austin. Austin got C there. Austin got there. I'll give him C stream Jared. delay on that one. I'll give him stream delay on that one. C Jared. Yeah, but Austin lives in the SEC uh, footprint. He, he's more likely to know that. He was a Buckeye, wasn't he? No. Butch Jones was never a Buckeye. Um, he was the head coach at Cincinnati, which might be why you're thinking that. Um, and he also was the head, by the way, um, did great things at Cincinnati. Um, won two, get this everybody, two Big East championships. Yes, this is, this is not the first time that the, uh, that Cincinnati was a part of a power, uh, then six program, uh, conference. Uh, the big least exactly, Austin. Uh, so yeah, uh, he really actually did help, um, essentially bridge the gap between Brian Kelly and Luke Fickle, I believe. Um, maybe, maybe not. I think there was someone in between. I think there was a, I think, no, I take that back. There was some, someone in between. Uh, but Butch Jones, uh, spent a, was it Tommy Tuberville? Oh, okay. Nope. Can't. Nope. Moving on from Tommy Tupperville, uh, <laughs> politics can't, can't go there. Uh, the <laughs> he's, he's a, he's a congressman now. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Butch Jones, uh, spent three years after being fired from Tennessee for general incompetence. Um, uh, spent three years in the Nick Saban rehab program, uh, where he did, uh, act as a, uh, assistant head coach, game planning consultant, um, against Ohio state in the 2020 season, uh, national championship game. Funny stuff. He lost a lot in his career. Um, I'm not sure if you're talking, well, I'm not sure which head coach you're talking about right now. <laughs> All right, so uh, didn't really need a, uh, to game plan for that defense. No, no, you did not. All right. So Arkansas state, let's, let's get to know him a little bit here. I know we're getting way sidetracked here. Jared. No, we're not. We're talking about Butch Jones. He's the head coach. This is all right, awesome. This is all highly, highly relevant. No. Oh. And we're he, taking he Arkansas with, State seriously. He, we're taking Arkansas start, State seriously. Don't anyone say we're not. He uh, he did start the season off uh, with a victory here. Uh, they had a decisive victory over Grambling, not Grambling State, just Grambling. <laughs> uh, what was the score? Uh, 58 to 3. Grambling State, a.k.a. Jared. <laughs> uh, That's yeah, funny. They beat, they beat, they beat Grambling. Uh, 58 to three and they out uh they had they had a yardage advantage of 572 to 102 i i understand but jared it, that this but is it a, was grambling i know i understand that this was an fcs school that they played against a and, bad you know, fcs they should be school able to do this and blah 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 this isn't but even th 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 this is not even reaching like any of the Dakotas, North Dakota, South Dakota, state, no state. This is this is not even a Dakota level FCS school. Yeah, so I'm gonna put some. I'm gonna just put this in here real quick. But so this was, I mean, yeah, it's either way, Jared. It's it's still pretty impressive that they held their opponent to 52 passing yards and 50 rushing yards. I, I don't care who you play. That's that's pretty impressive. Honestly, Kyle, that's true. Because in 2021, the Red Wolf defense um, was last in the nation against the run, the second worst overall defense in college football, allowing 506 yards per game and 
39 points per game. They were basically the worst defense, uh, especially against the run in all of college football last year. Um, yes, gangland, even behind us. Uh, so maybe, and this is, this is, this is Butch Jones second, Butch Jones, like we can, we can make fun all we want. Um, quite frankly, a lot of coaches have failed at Tennessee since I was going to say Peyton Manning, but that would not be true. Uh, was it T Martin since T Martin graduated? Um, a lot of coaches have failed there. So may, maybe maybe it's not Butch Jones. This is his second year at Arkansas State. Maybe they're starting to take some step forwards. As Kyle said, I don't care who you play. 100 yards total offense is pretty good, especially when you were giving up 506 yards per game in the 2021 season. Yeah. So let's get to know him a little bit more here. So their starting quarterback, James Blackman, didn't have to really do much um, through 75, 75. Yeah. 75% for uh, 210 yards and two touchdowns. No, no picks, but it was really their ground game that really got them going in this game. They rushed for 339 yards and it's led by uh, two, two of their running backs, uh, Johnny Lang and Brian Sneed. So the, Hearing that last name Sneed should ring a bell for some people. Oh, Kyle, you covered a lot there that we need to maybe backtrack on. Stuart, I think, was asking about Blackman um, when, uh, based on the timing of when he asked transfer. Uh, yes, uh, if James Blackman's name sounds familiar, he is the former starting quarterback at Florida State. Uh, James Blackman actually had a pretty good... Uh, former bucket running back with a criminal domestic violence charge question mark um no worse uh worse um but no uh ba back to blackman uh blackman this is actually his second year at arkansas state um his his first year at arkansas state was ended early due to a shoulder injury but in his time uh in his in the first half of last year he he actually looked pretty good um, this is a D1 level quarterback and and could be um, a decent warm up for Ohio State as, you know, no disrespect to the Notre Dame quarterback, but that is a red shirt freshman making his first ever start. Um, I believe he will be good. I do believe that he will be good. But again, red shirt freshman making his first start. Uh, James Blackman, on the other hand, has lots of starts under his belt. And like I said, is a Florida State level talent. Um, Kyle also brought up Brian Sneed, uh, Brian Sneed, you will remember, uh, was a running back recruit for Ohio state. Uh, he was, he was dismissed, not just from the team, but from the university in 2018. Um, we'll just say, uh, st uh, st student code of conduct charges and, and, uh, maybe leave it at that. Um, as I already pointed out. It wasn't domestic violence. It was worse. And it also it was alleged. I don't think he was ever criminally charged. So we'll just keep all of the uh, details in our back pocket on, on that one. Um, he transferred to FCS Austin P. Uh, and then just this season is now with Arkansas State. Yep. And he had, he had 12 carries for 57 yards and a touchdown in his first week. Yeah. Uh, and uh, was he on the Dabo plan? I don't know what that means. Um, oh, we're going to move on. <laughs> yeah. um, as Kyle pointed out, um, they. Oh, that Dabo plan. I don't know the details and nor do I want to. Uh, the. Again. So if we compare it like last year to this year, they had a good running game against Grambling. Um, again, it was Grambling, but again, uh, Arkansas State was one of the worst running teams in the country. 
This is, this is a recurring theme, unfortunately for them. Uh, one of the worst running teams in the country in 2021. They ran the ball 349 times for 989 yards, an average of only 2.83 yards per carry. Ugh, and they're top three. Uh, and from what I read, because if you think I if you think I went and watched a bunch of uh, 2021 Arkansas State games to prep for this, you are wrong. Um, but from what I read, um, no, I honestly didn't. But from what I read, uh, a lot of that blame was was put on the offensive line um, as opposed to their running backs. Um, in fact, uh, their top running back, uh, Lincoln Pear. Uh, who ran for 405, 455 yards uh, last year, uh, went into the transfer portal and is now playing for Texas State. Ooh, Kyle, I just said a lot of things. You did. I was just letting you ramble. Just letting you ramble. <laughs> that was not there. ramble. That was solid wall-to-wall -wall information. <laughs> you can accurately accurately just, accurately accuse me of rambling many times right now for example <laughs> but what you accused me of before was wall-to-wall -wall packed information jared yeah you better drink some of that <laughs> all right uh, there's no alcohol in it this isn't gonna fix anything all right, some other players to get to know as well. Uh, Brian Sneed is not a, actually their main running back. Their main running back is named Johnny Lang, who who rushed the ball Johnny Lang. Times to, yeah, who rushed the ball thirteen times for one hundred and twenty four yards, which is a much better average. Uh, let's see some other names. They have uh, two wide receivers. One of them, actually, both of them, uh, transferred in. You got. Champ Flemings, who had a pretty good game, uh, seven reception for 122 yards and a and a touchdown catch. And Stewart's in the chat. That doesn't care. He's like, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I think that other, was directed other, specifically at me. Okay. And the other the other transfer wide receiver is uh to Valance Hunt, who didn't get a single catch in last week's game, but those are those are the two main wide receiver transfers for Arkansas State. Uh, did you mention Jeff Foreman, who is their deep threat at wide receiver? Uh, he's not a transfer. That's probably why you didn't mention him. Um, they had one. to go to the they had to go to the transfer portal um, to get some wide receivers because uh, Arizona, Arizona, Arkansas State lost their top wide receiver from 2021, whose name is Corey Rucker, uh, to South Carolina via the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. No, not George Foreman, but Jeff, Jeff Foreman. Foreman. Close, but no cigar. All right, defensively, uh, defensively they have a lot of they got a lot of upperclassmen, especially in their uh, their front seven, their front seven. Yes, uh, leading off, uh, they have two pretty pretty decent defensive ends uh, who had solid solid games against uh, Granville in their first week. Uh, Karon Crawford, who had three tackles for loss in a sack, as well as Thurman uh, Guthers, who also had three tackles for loss in a sack as well. Um, also, just some other names for the defensive side, just just for people to know. Uh, <laughs> uh, Trevion Thomas is, is a safety that likes to really play up and not your face. And then you have Eddie Smith, who's more of your uh, deeper safety, who did have a pick in last weekend's game. Uh, I was a bit distracted by all the all the gifts. So if I repeat any names here, please forgive me. Um, leading defensive player from the 2021 squad, uh, Kyvon Bennett is a Tennessee transfer. So here's another D1 level talent. Um, I keep saying D1. I mean, like power five, uh, power five level talent. Uh he had eight sacks and 16 and a half tackle for tackles for losses in 2021. Uh, he's joined by another former uh, Tennessee volunteer, John Mincy. Uh, Mincy as is at defensive tackle Bennett's at defensive end. 
Um, and Kyle mentioned they had a nice pair of safeties. Once again, uh, lost their second leading tackler, uh, best player in their secondary from last year's team, uh, who transferred to James Madison via the transfer portal. I got a lot of recurring themes here, Kyle. A lot of um, really, really bad in 2021. Looked okay in week one of 2022, but grambling. Um, and a lot of players both uh, leaving uh, and arriving via the transfer portal. A lot of turnover mm -hmm. on this team. But hey, if you have one of the worst running offenses in the country, the worst running defense in the country, uh, and overall, just shitty defense altogether. Uh, maybe some player uh, turnover isn't isn't the worst possible thing. Yeah. Hey, Austin brought up a good point here, Jared. You know who their defensive coordinator is? Buckeye fans should know this name. I do not know this one. You have me. You have me this time. Rob Harley. And yes, his his great uncle is the legendary Chick Harley. And uh, Rob Harley was part of that 2002 national championship team where he graduated Define at Ohio State in 2006. A part of. He was a part of the, two th okay. <laughs> the team. <laughs> I recognize the last name. Um, hey, he was on the team. He was on the roster. Uh, Ring still shines the same. Yes, Austin, it does. Damn, Sloopbot went to sleep. Uh, we'll have to talk to Jug about that. Uh, does it matter? He was there. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Anything? Well, that looks like it. Uh, I did put in here their probably their linebacker. If you're looking for a linebacker. For Arkansas State, uh, Jordan um, Kamuch, Kamuch, Kamouch. How would you say don't, that? Don't I? I don't. Don't. Why, why would you ask me? Blind because leading I the want, blind. I want your intake, Jared. We value you, your intake. No, you don't. You yes, mock we me. Do. You mock me, Jared. You mock me, Jared. <laughs> no, we don't. Kyle. See. <laughs> That's that is the most guys is you saying you don't value my input, but disagreeing with Kyle. Were you, were you team Jared there? Cause you agreed with me. <laughs> you right. said you didn't right. value my input, but you agreed with me. All right. Let, let's, let's move on to our, our, uh, our picks here. So let's let's start it off with Ohio State player to watch as I can't talk. Ohio State player to watch. And Jared, before we pick, who is our guest picker for this weekend? Our guest picker is a uh, Sloop Cat and member of the Discord, member of the Patreon. He goes by the name Odin's Creation. Which I learned recently uh, is also his uh, his TikTok tag. So. Always be plugging, even when it's not my <laughs> plug to plug. All right. All right. We'll start off with you, Jared. Ohio State player to watch in this game. Uh, I'm going Trey Henderson. Um, I'm I'm not buying the fact that this defense is, is somehow uh, resurrected and better and, and good. To me, this is still the, and even... Like even like if last year they were 136th pass or excuse me running defense, um, even if they're better, they're still probably on the bad side of 100, right? Give me Henderson. All right, I I think yes they will run the ball, but you know just because I think he's going to have a big impact in this game. And when I'm being big impact, I mean, in the return game, that's right. I'm going with Ibuka. Yep. I was desperate for that special teams touchdown. Going with a Mecca to the Mecca. <laughs> a Mecca awesome. to the Mecca. Like it. <laughs> nice. All right. And Odin here says he is going with the other running back. Chop 
or Mayan Williams. Uh, he's a, I think he's going to get more snaps and will explode. Henderson will do well too, but I see Williams having some long, long runs from broken tackles, which God, I, I watched the game probably about at least an extra time. I've watched a little bit more than one more full time than Saturday. And man, just watching chop run through those, through those tackles. Oof. Oof. That man is a bowling ball. He's a much leaner bowling ball now though. He is. I don't yes. know if pork chops a good nickname anymore. All right. Enemy player to watch Jared. Enemy player to watch. I'm going with James Blackman. Um, He's their quarterback. He is, I would assume, without actually doing the the necessary footwork to confirm this, one of the most uh, higher ranked, if not highest ranked uh, recruit. Recruiting rankings at this point mean only so much, I acknowledge. Uh, but one of the highest ranked recruits uh, on the team. Um, he proved even on a, if we're assuming last year's Arkansas State was worse, uh, than this current one, which I think is a very fair assumption to make because it, it literally doesn't get worse. Um, mm. I, but he, I, but I, even on that team, before he got injured, he was doing well. Mm -hmm. All right. And I have, I'll go to the guy that uh, Blackman will be throwing to, and that's uh, Champ Flemings. He had a really good game against Grambling. Uh, Ohio State was not really tested in the air uh, last weekend. I think Arkansas State will see that they can't run the ball and that they're going to have to pass and they're going to have to have success with with somebody. So I'm going to go with uh, Champ Flemings. Austin says the correct answer is Ryan Hansen. Okay. <laughs> um. And that would be their uh, their punter, by the way. Yeah, I did. Right, I, uh, I, to Odin. I, to I totally knew that. All right, Odin here says he has Johnny Lang. He said had had some good runs last week in week one. Got to hope our D line isn't sleeping on any place, or else constellation touchdowns will be scored by him. All right, key matchup, Jared, and no, you can't do offensive line versus defensive line. Well. I know defensive line versus offensive line. I know, which is why I was far more specific this time. <laughs> Paris Johnson. See, that's a, that's a single offensive lineman. This is acceptable. Uh, versus Kavon Bennett. Um, again, the former Tennessee volunteer who was maybe the one, one of two uh, standouts on the defense in 2021. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, I have a tough time with this key matchup because really my thing is really just not steal not really Austin's playing, answer. Just steal really Austin's playing answer down, not playing down to your opponent. I want to I want to see them have a have a really good showing, get 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 some momentum going, get um, get the team, the offense in sync here because it was okay. all out of sync uh, last weekend and 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 rightfully so for who they played. So I, re I really want to see some good, uh, good momentum, good, um, just good one play after the next, just a good okay. flow in the offense. So I, uh, if you're going to no idea where key... you're going with this, what? I have no idea where you're going with this. I feel like <laughs> that entire preamble led us to nothing. No, I know it led us to nothing. <laughs> I know. I feel did. like you don't have an answer in your killing time. If I'm being yes, honest with you, this, this is this is this is true. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with. I like Austin's answer. Ohio State second string receivers versus Arkansas State start starting defensive backs. Kyle, can I to to try and make your ramble because you're the one that's rambling now. To make mm -hmm. your ramble make sense, I think what the I think what you're looking for is for a key matchup there was Ohio State, the entire team versus complacency. That, that's not an acceptable answer. You can't use that. But it would have been fun if you had. <laughs> All right. So I'll I'll go with 
I'll go with Ohio State. Uh, let's go with Ballard. I think I think I think Ballard here versus versus uh, whoever he's going to go up against here. Because <laughs> I think I think I think with uh, I think Jason will be out this week. Yeah, and still unsure about Fleming if he's going to be in here. So Abuka, they're going to keep an they're going to keep an eye on Abuka. So getting Ballard to come in and make some plays. Uh, we got to see uh, Xavier Johnson make some plays, which everybody loved. But I think I think we'll see a lot more of Ballard in this game, and I I expect him to have a pretty decent game here. And Odin's key matchup is cornerbacks versus our main receiver. <laughs> I swear I did not read this before I said mine. Um, I'm sure they will be hyped and will bring whatever they can. Okay, right. Kyle. Down to brass tacks, Ohio State favored by 43 and a half. That's a lot of points. 43 and a half. It's a lot. I feel like that's maybe a touchdown away from just you not being able to bet on this game. Like, I they don't go over 50 too often. At a certain point, they just take it off the damn board. And we're we're close to that. Mm-hmm. Um, so Kyle, are you taking Ohio State? Minus 43 and a half. No. Wow. Two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row. Two two weeks in a row, Kyle. Two weeks in a row. I'm being realistic, Jared. Austin says he's not either. So you're all a bunch of traitors. And and you know what? Odin agrees. He he does not have Ohio State here. He has... Yeah, it's Arkansas State to cover the 43 and a half because 43 and a half is a lot. That's a lot. I don't believe and you. I'll explain, and I'll explain, Jared. I'll explain here. How many points did Ohio State score against uh, Notre Dame? Not relevant. Yes, it is relevant. No, it is not. It is relevant, Jared. No, it isn't. <laughs> Why isn't it? Because Arkansas State. Because it's Arkansas State. Literally, one of this this is the second worst defense in 2021. Yes, it's 2022 now. I don't care. You don't make up that much ground that quickly. Well, 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 how I don't do care. Well, how I do that this year for how bad of an offense or defense they had last year. You can replace a single defensive coordinator in an offseason. You can't replace 11, 22 if we're going into the two deep players in one year. I don't think Ohio State will score enough to to win by 43 and a half. I'll I'll, I'll put it that way. I think they'll they'll get a lot of extra. They'll get a lot of second second team, third team snaps in there. So, yes, you will see Kyle McCord in there. Uh, <laughs> so I don't, I don't think, I don't think 43 and a half, it, they're, they're going to get to that point. I, I think they will. Right. I, I think, and unfortunately I don't, I think it's possible. I'm not predicting it. I, I am. If I, if I can, we all pick Ohio state to win. No one's questioning this. I am picking. So we can just fast forward through that. I am picking Ohio State to win and cover, unlike the two Benedict Arnolds who are picking along with me. Cowards. All right. My final score prediction will be 59-10. All 10 of those points will come in the second half against backups. Thank you, Austin. The tradition continues. Um. 59 59 to 10. All right. Ohio State will score at will. The only way, and I mean the only way Ohio State does not cover 43 and a half here is if they run the ball so damn much that they just run out of time. Because that might happen. Did you see how happy Ryan Day was to have won a game off of the back of his running backs for once? To establish and dominate a run game. 
Can I get a look it up, Kyle? Look it up, Kyle. I want to know what the team team rushing record is for Ohio State. Team most rushing record. Okay. Most rushing yards in a game for not an individual, the entire team. Uh, Austin says 442 question mark. Um, Ohio State football, most rushing yards in a game. Uh, that's a good question. Um, Cause every time I look, everything that keep coming up, it keeps coming with Trey Sermon. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, whatever the number is, I'm going over. <laughs> whatever the number is, I'm taking the over. Kyle, what's your score prediction? Have Ohio State 52, Arkansas State 17. Raider. 17 points, really? Notre Dame, to 17. Notre Dame scored 10, and you're saying Arkansas State is going to score 17. Austin, 52 to 17. He says, what? <laughs> It's not funny when you do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My tradition, uh, Odin, damn it. All right. Odin has here. The spread is over 43 points for this, and I can't see us getting that. I think we will get a five touch and a win at most. Ohio State will win in the final score, 49 to 10. There you go. Just not a nice. It's not. I don't think he's aware of the tradition. Kyle, it's time for Austin's overs on over unders. I've already given an over prediction for the day. Whatever the Ohio State rushing record is in a single game over for the team. I think it's going to get split between Williams and and Trey. So I don't I'm not predicting an individual record, but as a team. Over. All right, Kyle, Austin's over unders. Um, catches by a true freshman wide receiver or true freshman wide receivers it's plural at four and a half Ooh, four and a half so you have brown you have burton you have grays and you have antoy going under i'm going under i, I think they want to maybe get bob in the game They've Xavier Johnson. Um, maybe Julian Fleming plays. Maybe he doesn't. Um, All right, Jared. I, I, there's a lot of wide receivers on this team. It's all right, I'm going to backtrack real quick here. Do you want to know what the most rushing yards in a game was at Ohio State? Yes. Back way back in 1930. Oh, oh God. way over. Way, way over Austin way over oh god back to 1930 i might have i may have fucked myself ohio 1930 state, records are crazy ohio state versus the purple raiders of mount union ohio state mm -hmm. rushed the ball against mount union for 718 yards so jared i rescind jared i rescind the over i'm re i rescind <laughs> I resent. Right, if you want to do, if you want to do a Big Ten team, you want to okay. Do a Big Ten team. I, that, that that doesn't make sense because Arkansas State's a Sun Belt team. But sure, what what's what's the record against the Big Ten opponent? All right. Well, it is their second most. It's their second most rushing yards in a game. Okay. Go back to 1962. Okay, we're 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 in reasonable territory here. <laughs> reasonable meaning meaning 60 years ago. <laughs> Listen. College football really didn't become college football until about the 60s. This was again in 1960, Kyle. No team in the SEC allowed African Americans on their football team. I don't think the ACC did either. Maybe Maryland did at that point. I'm not sure. Totally different world before the 60s. Okay. This was again 1962. Ohio State won this game 51 to 15. Okay. They set um, no longer a Big Ten record, but then Big Ten record 
517 yards against Illinois. Possible. I'm possible the under. That's 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 a lot. Possible. All right, back to that's Austin's over unders. All right, back to Ohio State sacks allowed at one and a half. I'm gonna go over. I'm going under. You got you got some in, you might have some inexperienced quarterbacks in there. Um, they do have a couple good pass rushers. Um, I would say under against Stroud, but over for the team. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Next one. Rushing yards by anyone not named Trey Hundo at 139.5. Over. Over. Yeah. I've made my, I've made my opinion on this rather clear. All right. Uh, turnovers by both teams at three and a half. God, that's hard. I'm going under. I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over. Game game might get sloppy late because you have a bunch of young people in. Arkansas State's good for a couple turnovers, you know, through the first half. It's possible one or two. So even if you get like two first half turnovers performed by Arkansas State, then you only need two more in the second half. And again, there'll be a lot of young, inexperienced players in there. Um, I'll go over. Okay, I'll go under there. Passes thrown by Brown and McCord set at 14 and a half. So this is interesting because how much will they actually pass the ball? at that point in the game, do they want to try and get Brown and McCord some like game reps in which case they might, but at the same time, by the time that those guys enter the game, they might just be like, you know, putting the playbook away and, and running Dave until the clock runs out. Um, so I, God, that, that I, mm. I'm going to go under. All right. I'll go over. I'll go over with that one. All right. Uh, Ohio State rushing touchdowns set up at two and a half. That one's over. That one's over. That's way over. And last one Arkansas State total passing yards at 177 and a half. Under. They had 233 in their opening game. Under. I'm going under as well. If they can do two, 230, if they can only do 233 against Grambling. I agree. Going and then Blackman's under. a talented quarterback, but they're not ready for this defensive line. Blackman's going to be running for his life. Um, mm-hmm. The, the Arkansas State offensive line is in no way prepared for what's about to happen to them. Yeah. All right. That is it for Austin's over unders. And we have some uh, quick questions, Jared, here. And then we got to wrap it up. Uh, Stuart asks or says over under for Brian Sneed at 75 yards rushing. Under. And I'll go under. I'll go under. They're not going to have 75 yards rushing as a team. All right. All right. Nomad, uh, quick questions here. Jared, how will Day and Stroud adjust to a lot of high cover two looks this year? Uh, by running and by just taking what's being given to them. Yeah. Agreed. 100%. They'll, they'll have to work on... They have to work on a lot of communication because with a cover two, you you tend to have a soft spot in the middle. So either KJ Hill needs to get help. I said KJ Hill again. Either JSN needs to be healthy or um, they need to teach Emeka or Xavier, whoever is going to be filling in in the slot to like sit in that zone and sort of learn how to read the defenses. Cause we saw a couple instances against Notre Dame where 
Stroud was expecting them to sit in the zone, but they kept running like it was in a man. Uh, so we're, we're going to have to, they'll have to work on that with some of the younger, less experienced wide receivers. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, well, we get to see a lot from JF four. I hope so. In this game. I don't know if he's still injured, if he's still dealing with an injury, you know, all the things that said about JSN, maybe copy paste it. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, how many minutes of garbage time will second string offense and defense uh, do we see this weekend? Uh, quite a bit. We will see quite a bit. I'd say the starters get a drive in the in third the quarter. quarter. Now, what mm. second quarter? Mm. Are you crazy? <laughs> They'll get a drive in the third quarter, then sit. All right. And the last question from Nomad is Eichenberg. He just says Ike. Finally showing his true ability. What, what, what was it that um somebody somebody in our Discord uh, it was, gave it was Eichenberg a, a nickname? It was a derogatory nickname, and I will not co-sign it, and I will not amplify it. If you say it, I'll bleep it. Okay. No, it's not Eichenberg, Lynn. I don't like that one either. <laughs> You're lucky I don't feel like editing this. <laughs> All right. Um finally showing his true ability i think i think we saw it last weekend so yeah. uh finally is not the correct uh he's fine phrase that question i would phrase it like this everyone say hi to apollo he's decided to join me for the end of this episode <laughs> um i would phrase it like this um eichenberg's been finally been put in a position to succeed all right all right and last question we have here from odin our guest picker this week he wants to know over under one more over under here. 20 hot dogs eaten between all of us this Saturday. I'm not a hot dog eater, so I'm not going to be carrying my weight here. Me either. I will not be my my over under is going to be at point five. Yeah, <laughs> under. <laughs> I'm going to go under. Uh, I'll go under as well. Unless Odin is picking up the slack somewhere. Possibly. All right, that's it, Jared. That is all of our questions that we have for this week's Know Your Enemy. Hey, uh, yeah, that's it. That's that's it. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. Everyone, visit the sloopcast.com. Um, it's a it's not technically a link tree, it's a different different service, but if you know what a link tree is, it's basically that. Um, so you can go there, find all of our links to all of our things, including our YouTube channel, including our Spotify page, including our Apple podcast page, including our two t-shirt stores, um, including our TikTok, including our Instagram, including both of our Twitters. Although uh, we don't use those a ton anymore from being honest. Um, Kyle, when was the last time you tweeted? Uh, actually, other... Other than just to say, hey, there's a new episode out. Uh, I think I did during uh, the uh, state games. Okay. All right. All right. Um, yeah. So that, that's 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 all the stuff. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, Gangland, why do I feel like you've been typing for the last twenty minutes? Oh. Oh, my thing wasn't scrolling. Son of a bean. Good job, Jared. Why wasn't it scrolling? So uh, I think I posted this earlier. I'll, I'll put it in here. Everybody. I don't have an OnlyFans that you know of. Mm -hmm. So, Jared, what do you think about this picture? And for those that is uh, listening to us in the podcast, it is a picture of uh, the LeBron James family. LeBron, his wife and his son, Bronny in a in a all white buckeye jersey uniform i know everyone wants bron how does that look jared it looks good it looks, it looks good right um <laughs> it looks right don't you say that zach <laughs> uh, by the yeah, way lot, there's a decent chance he just doesn't play college basketball for being honest um there's there's that too there's that too. Uh, but maybe more importantly, and he could go 
he could just go G League. Yeah, he could, yeah. Uh he has he has options. Um and I'm I'm not I'm not good at basketball recruiting. I don't follow it nearly as closely, but I won't say more importantly, but maybe more sort I'm looking for here urgently, timely, um notab- no, not notably. Uh, the other kid's last name is 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 James. His his first name is LeBron legally, so he's more notable. Um, uh, a player from Minnesota uh, feels like a very talented guard from Minnesota feels like uh, might be coming to Ohio State. Uh, I forget his name because I'm not very good at covering basketball recruiting. I acknowledge this, um, but that's a a player to watch for sure. Okay. All right. Awesome. So we'll, we'll keep, we, we keep an eye on Bronny, of course, of course. Um, but there might be, um, a, not from like a celebrity standpoint, but from a skill standpoint, maybe just as valuable player, uh, committing to Ohio state sooner. If Bronny comes, I'll buy you all a ham sandwich. What? What? I mean, is it like, is it just ham? I I need to get my order and we'll do that off the podcast. All right. We are way over in time, Jared. Let's, let's I go don't eat this. mustard. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music. Uh, we played them Monday and Tuesday. We're going to play them again here from Cincinnati. Pop punk band. Settle your scores. Playing them this week. Once again, pop punk band from Cincinnati. I almost said Seattle for some reason from Cincinnati called settle your scores. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, this is settle your scores.